You know who was up watching the game? Bob Costas was watching the game, and he joins us now. Bob, see if you agree with this. Even without all the history, all the baggage, the mm -hmm. drought, the frustration for these two baseball cities, I think this is one of the greatest World Series games I've ever seen. Yeah, it's one of the great Game 7s, as you said, Matt, even if you take away all the backstory. One of the great Game 7s, the back and forth, it had heroics, it had misplays, it had strategy that was brilliant, strategy that could be questioned. Both teams got off the mat. It went right down to the last pitch of the game. It had everything, even if it didn't involve two franchises with such star-crossed histories. Is there a moment, Bob, I mean, if you're a Cubs fan and 50 years from now you're telling your grandkids about that Game 7 in 2016, was there one moment that kind of crystallized it all? Well, they blew a lead, a sizable lead, and then everybody across Cub Nation was saying, oh my gosh, here we go again. But Cleveland has its own experience with that. You had two teams with not exactly parallel histories, but overlapping histories. So I think there was some anxiety involved, but I guess if you had to pick out one thing, it would be the Zobrist hit after the rain delay that gave them the lead in the top of the 10th, although the Indians battled back and pulled it within one and had a man on when it finally ended. As if Hollywood needed more to make a great movie. Talk about that rain delay. The skies <laughs> open up. Here comes the tarp. The Cubs players go in and have a, a, a players only meeting. I'm trying to imagine who's going to be who the actors are going to be <laughs> when I watch that on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently Jason Hayward, uh, a great fielder, a terrific base runner who has struggled at the plate most of the season but had his moments in the postseason, he apparently led uh, that brief meeting. And the Indians had a little bit of uh, mojo going because Rajay Davis had hit the home run to tie the game in the eighth inning. So if there was any momentum, it seemed to belong to Cleveland. And some people will theorize that the rain delay kind of reset things and gave the Cubs a chance to get their bearings again. And they came back out and they got two runs in the top half of the 10th. You inning. talk about strategy, and I, I think you're maybe referring in one of those strategic calls when Joe Madden takes out Hendricks in the fifth, who's in the middle of pitching a gem, brings in Lester. Yep. And then that pitch hits David Ross in the mask, and next thing you know, Cleveland scores two runs. Had the Cubs not won that game, Bob, how much second-guessing of that call would there have been? Joe Madden is one of the great modern managers, but the way he used his pitching staff, Chapman, and the quick hooks for Arietta and for Hendricks in games six and seven would have opened him up to legitimate second guessing, plus all the noise and nonsense on talk radio and social media had the Cubs lost. But since they won, it's all forgotten, and everybody loves Madden as they should. He's doing a double exhale this morning. Then. What's it mean to the city of yeah. Chicago, Bob? Well, it, it means more than could possibly be expressed, as it would have meant to Cleveland because they had waited since 1948 and hadn't won a title in any sport since 1964. I mean, after all, in Chicago, the Blackhawks had won, the Bears had won, Michael Jordan's Bulls won six times. The Cleveland had been without one in any sport since 64 until the Cavs won in the spring, and then they were looking to double down in the fall. So it would have meant a lot there. But when it comes to just baseball in Chicago, even though the White Sox won in 2005. The Cubs are the team. They're the identity of Chicago baseball. And to go from 1908 to 2016, and I think it's very important that Wrigley Field was built in 1914. It wasn't called Wrigley right. Field till a bit later. But Wrigley Field is the place where all this played out. Just like Fenway Park still exists, so all the ghosts were there when they finally broke through in 2004. All the ghosts, all the history, all of it resides at Wrigley Field. Had they moved to a new ballpark in the interim, even had it been 108 years, I don't think it would have quite the texture and the drama. Wrigley Field still stands. People gathered yeah. at Wrigley Field, even though the game was being played in Cleveland, to experience it communally. We wanted a good World Series. We got a great World Series. Bob Costas, thanks, oh, yeah. bud. Sure did. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.